yeah, yeah, I know, it's been a while, but this time around, we're going to take a look at one of the more interesting yet obscure pieces of video game history, the Atari 26... No, no, just kidding, that's been done to death. The Vectrex from General Consumer Electronics. The Vectrex was arguably one of the most unique classic video game consoles ever. While other systems before it had built-in displays, they were usually some form of LCD, LED, or vacuum fluorescent display technology. The Vectrex was unique because it packed in a CRT tube. The display is a portrait-oriented 9x11 monochrome CRT that uses high-resolution black-and-white vector graphics, bucking the trend of more colorful yet lower resolution pixels commonly found almost everywhere at the time. To compensate for its lack of color, games came packed with transparent plastic overlays that would add static imagery, borders, and blocks of color to parts of the screen. The console includes two hardwired gamepads, each with a single directional joystick and four buttons. Under the hood beats a 68 a 9 CPU running at 1.5 MHz. It's a similar processor to the one used in the Commodore Super Pet and more famously the TRS-80 color computer. It also includes 1K of RAM and an 8K ROM, and the popular AY38912 audio synthesizer found in many arcade machines of the era. Only two accessories were ever created for the Vectrex. A light pen, of which only two games were ever made, and then in 1984, something called the 3D Imager was released in small quantities, allowing players to play games in a limited amount of color with a kind of a 3D depth effect using a spinning color wheel disc. The device was only released in the United States and was discontinued the same year. Three games made use of it, but that's about it. The Vectrex was originally manufactured by General Consumer Electronics and debuted in North America in late 1982 at $199. After being bought by Milton Bradley, it saw releases in Europe and Japan in mid-1983. Despite high praise from critics, the console would not survive the then-turbulent video game industry. After Milton Bradley merged with Hasbro, the console was discontinued in mid-1984. Over its lifetime, there were 29 official commercial releases, including Mindstorm. This was an excellent clone of Atari's famous Asteroids arcade game. Besides being really fun, having vector graphics like Asteroids helped elevate this one above other clones from the era. Berserk. Not a clone, but an official port of Stern Electronics' overhead arcade shooter. Star Trek The Motion Picture. This was the only licensed title, and it was a first-person space shooter putting you in command of the Starship Enterprise, battling her enemies. Since the 1990s, there have been a decent amount of homebrew games and demonstrations available for the Vectrex. Some of these games even include physical cartridges, overlays, and boxes. These can be played on the original hardware or with one of several emulators. Links for those are available in the description. It's a common belief that the library of commercial Vectrex games was dumped into the public domain. However, the legality of pirating commercial ROM files for this system is kind of a bit of a gray area, considering that the company has been out of business for such a long time. I just could not find any source for it outside of just people talking on forums about it. However, the collection is easily found through the usual channels, and links for those are not in the description. That's all for now. Sorry it's been so long since the last one. Life happens. Anyway, to read more on this topic, check out the links in the description. If you have a suggestion for a new topic you'd like to see covered, let me know in the comments. If you found this informative and want to know more random things in 3 Minute Bites, be sure to hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. Atari? My television? How about for this? You bet your asteroids.